All right, so in this video, I wanted to talk about a technique I've been using to dramatically lower my render times. And what I'm talking about here is AI video upscaling. Uh, this is something that has been around for a while. It is, however, something that I just started using not too long ago, really just a couple of weeks. Um, but I definitely wanted to make a video about my process, what I found with it, and just how much time we can save when it comes to rendering animations. So let's take a look. Okay, so here is the project I'm going to be um, showing with this. And I already rendered out these animations. I've rendered out some stills so we can get a sense of the render times here. Now, these render times for the stills don't tell the full story. Because this is such a heavy scene, uh, there's a lot of translation time, processing time before the image actually starts rendering. And um, over the course of the full animation, what I found was the 4K animation took about four hours, the HD animation took about two hours, and the half HD or 960 by 540 animation took a little over one hour. So almost double, all right, when you go up. So, you know, doubling the render time from half HD to full HD and doubling the render time from HD to 4K, which makes sense uh, because we have four times the pixels, okay? So I'm surprised it's only double the render time, all right? But with that, I've rendered out several animations, uh, versions of these animations in those three different resolutions I just mentioned. So we could compare them before and after the up res and really see how far we can push this because I was actually pretty surprised with the results. So if we just look at this, this is the 4K animation where um, everything's been scaled up to 4K just to make it easier to spot the differences. So on this left-hand side here, we are seeing the half HD, 960 by 540. And we can definitely tell how pixelated that is. We have the full HD, which actually doesn't look too bad until you see um, the 4K one. And that's the one that looks obviously the best. And if you just wanted to see the full 4K one and see what that looks like comparatively to the HD with the text, you can really see the difference and hopefully that's coming through in on youtube i know they compress things quite a bit so that's what we want to try to avoid okay or, or you know minimize is having to re-render um when we do these big jumps in resolution um, because typically when i work i work at half hd for preview animations um, when i'm trying to get client approval and then for final output or final deliverables i'll do hd i've had to do a couple of 4k stuff but um Honestly, not all that much for the, the type of work I do. Um, but what I found is, you know, 4K tends to make Cinema 4D run a bit slower, uh, more prone to crashing. There's more translation time. You know, it's just harder for uh, the software, both Cinema 4D and Redshift, to deal with 4K images and animation. So if I can avoid that, great. And that's what I found is what I can do is take my half HD um, animations convert them to full HD using this AI software. Um, and honestly, it looks pretty good. Okay, so here's one more kind of comparison originally of what these look like. And once again, you can just kind of see the blurriness here. Right there's a good spot. And even on the HD to 4K, there's some. I also want to mention there is a little bit of a difference in the way just the overall render looks. I don't understand how that happened, but um, the cardboard is a bit different and you'll see some of that here very shortly. But let's take a look at the up -resed, um versions. Okay, so on the left, we have the half HD that has been up to full HD. And then on the right, you are seeing the full HD. Okay, and if I just toggle off the half HD, that's been up -resed, you'll see there's almost no difference. In fact, let's get rid of the stroke just so we don't have to worry about that. Very, very little difference. Okay, honestly, the only difference is the text and I have found text to be a bit problematic. So um, I don't think that's a, a deal breaker for this, at least not in this one. Though I would, you know, obviously wanna check the full animation instead of just kind of looking at a single frame. Um, but yeah, honestly, that's looking pretty good. I'm not seeing a lot of change on the right-hand side here or with kind of the, the beans in the background. Okay, so th this is what I've done the most is take half HD or 960 by 540 and up-res them to full HD 
uh, with very good success. You know, on the, the last project I did it, I think I had about um, 15 animations that I did this to, and I think about 11 to 12 of them came out great. Um, there were several that did have text uh, that, not several, you know, I think it was three to four that did have text that actually did have to um, re-render in full HD, but not, like I said, a, a huge deal with that. Still a big time saving. Now with this one, what I did is I took the half HD, I up it to 4K. I took my HD one and up it to 4K to see if you can get away with that or if you really have to um, render or, or start with HD footage here. And what I found is, you know, the half res does hold up pretty well, the half HD, okay? I mean, let's see, I can just do this. And let's get rid of the stroke and mask here. Okay. That way we can just very easily make a full comparison. So we are seeing a little bit of that uh, change in the cardboard as well. So try to ignore that. But, you know, there is the 4K. Here is the half HD uprest. And, you know, there's definitely some issues. I'm seeing some noise here in the, the lid of the coffee cup. There's definitely some artifacting and issues going on in the background. You know, how much of that of, am I going to notice while this plays? I don't know. Okay, so I think in a pinch, you could take a 960 by 540 and up res it to 4K and you might be, that might be good enough. But what I want to do is compare the full HD one since that's probably what I would do anyway. Okay, just to make sure I minimize those artifacts. And a lot of those artifacts are now gone um, in this HD version that's been up -res. There's still that change in cardboard, okay? That's just, that came in the original render, all right? But the noise in the cup is gone. I'm not seeing a lot of the same artifacts or issues. I was saying, I'm seeing a little bit of a change in kind of the, the brighter areas and a few of the beans, but ultimately, this looks pretty darn good, okay? So definitely something I would I would do, all right? And ultimately, that's what I, I found out. Um, you really don't wanna go up more than you know one kind of step there. So uh, if you wanna go up to HD, you need at least 960 by 540. And if you wanna go up to 4K, I re would recommend at least HD. Now, every project's gonna be different, but that's what I found in my tests and in this scene. So what piece of software am I doing this with? Well, I just Googled video AI upscale. You know, when I was first thinking about this, I was like, surely there has to be a way to do this. I hear AI mentioned, you know, every day, it seems like there's a new use for it, whether it's generating art, whether it's textures. So I was like, there obviously has to be something for video. Um, and I stumbled upon Topaz. That's ultimately the one I went with. Um, you can see I did a bunch of research and I made it, what, two or three? Um, results down before, you know, calling it a day and, and going for it. But I did also find this website that does go into uh, in depth about um, different AI upscaling software. And so um, I did read through this and, and saw that they, you know, thought pretty, pretty good of the Topaz one. So that's why I went with it. They even talk about some free ones like video 2x, although I think they mentioned it's not necessarily for beginners. Um, you know, I didn't spend too much time on those free ones um, personally because, you know, for a free for my freelance work, um, you know, I had no problem uh, spending this money because it was going to save me so much more when it came to uh, saving me time uh, on renders or cost of using a render farm. Okay, now. A lot of these also have free trials, and that's absolutely what I did with with uh, the, the Topaz one. I downloaded the free trial and, um, you know, tested it and I was blown away by the results. So I immediately bought it. Um, I can't speak for the others. And obviously this video isn't sponsored by Topaz or anything like that. Um, but you know, honestly, this is super easy. Uh, I load in my animation. I didn't really have to touch much of anything here. It kind of figured it all out for me, or I'm not even sure if these are de uh, defaults. The only thing I really did was specify the output size um, the, in the video format, okay? Uh, and then you can decide where you want it to save to and get the, the process going. And really, that's it, okay? Like I said, super simple, super straightforward. And I was very happy to, um, you know, find something like this, remember something 
like this existed so that I could save a bunch of time um, when it comes to rendering. Because rendering takes time, it takes money. I don't like wasting either of those things or spending any more on those than I absolutely have to. One other thing I should mention, and one of the reasons why I keep kind of saying, oh, I've known about this for a while or have thought about it previously, is because I do know Octane has um, upscaling built in. And I do remember messing around with that long time ago when I was using Octane. I wasn't terribly impressed with the results, especially for animations, um, though that was a while ago. So uh, things definitely could have changed. And you know, if you use Octane, it's built in, great. I would definitely give it a try. Um, Octane it might even be cheaper than some of these uh, standalone pieces of software. And so it may be worth considering, not just for that, but also for you know rendering, if that's something um, you might, get uh, use out of because, you know, really Octane, they do a pretty sweet bundle with um, Grayscale Gorilla, um, Embergen, and, and more. And honestly, even though I don't use Octane as much as I used to, I still own it. I still um, have a license for it because of the the bundle they have with Grayscale Gorilla, um, the Plus subscription, and, you know, Embergen as well as nice to, to play around with. So yeah, it all works out uh, quite nice. But that will do it for this video. Um, let me know if there's anything else you want to see. And also, if you wouldn't mind leaving a comment, subscribing, letting me know if there's an, uh, you know, a video you would like to see me make, uh, a tool or technique in Cinema 4D. Um, I'd really appreciate that. So uh, take care.